Yeah, it smacked it. Man, that rocks that target. Yeah, well, it's a big old heavy ball. We're moving to a new campsite. Doesn't sound like it's moving that fast. I think it's probably 1300-ish. Yeah? If I had to take a guess. We didn't, did we, we didn't bring the chrono, did we? I did bring a chrono. Oh, okay. I don't know if we want to chrono all of these. I, I kind of am a little bit more concerned about how they, how they group. Yeah. So about a month ago, I got a Snyder rifle. It is a Mark II two-star. And it needed a little bit of lock work. It was having a problem when you pull the trigger, it would stop at half cock. But I had some rounds ready to go and we had to take it out to the pasture and just see what it would do. Now, this is my second Snyder. I own a Nepalese Snyder that is in much worse condition. And my Nepalese Snyder always worked really well with these... 585 mini balls from Track of the Wolf. I was never able to get it to function well with any reasonable accuracy using these standard 575 mini balls or Burton bullets if you want to get technical. Now these are what I use in my two band rifle musket and they work fine, but they never worked well in the Snyder. So before I went and started machining a new mold or altering the mold that I used to make those, I wanted to see if I could make those function. Because the original Snyder projectile had either an iron cup or a wood base that went into the hollow base of that and actually forced it to expand as it was being pushed down the barrel by driving into that hollow base and expanding the sides of the projectile. And I wanted to give that a try. Only problem is I don't have any ability to turn pieces of wood. And uh, the only thing I could think of that would probably be the fastest was to fill that cavity with my black powder lube, which is lamb's tallow and beeswax. So we are gonna put two sets of these together, some with the 585 Mini and some with the 575 Mini, and we'll see how it goes. Now, I have seen guys load these without using the die set, but I had to buy the die set because I needed to form my 24-gauge shot shells into Snyder, so I, I have it, so I might as well use it. But I can tell you that when you're using the 585 Burton bullet, that you really have to flare that case mouth a lot. And it actually gives it a really funny looking end result because it actually has like an hourglass look to it after the bullet is seated. Now, I do have five actual 577 Snyder cases, and that's what these are. And you can definitely tell that they are a higher quality than the 24 gauge shot shell cases. They're just heavier duty, the rims are thicker, they're heavier overall. Um, but, you know, the, the 24 gauge ones work fine too. So we're going to start these off with 60 grains of 3F Swiss. Now I have found that a 2.2 cc dipper worth of cream of wheat is the perfect amount. All right, so here we have our 585 Burton bullet with our charged up case. Look, see here. Yep, quite nice. So here is our 575 mini ball. And so what I'm going to do is I am going to pack that cavity full of grease 
and pretty much make it flush, I think. Maybe I'll leave a little bit of an indent there. And my theory is that that will basically act like the original wooden plug that they were using back in the 1860s. And I'll just lube it up like I would usually, and we'll give it a try. Okay, so there it is. Now, this is a new thing. I have not tried this. And uh, like I said earlier, the only way I could get the 575s to perform well was by running pretty much a full case load worth of powder, which was a hundred and some odd grains. It might even have been 120. And that was enough to expand it to get it to where it would it would fire accurately. But man, I tell you, it was not pleasant to shoot. And it ended up splitting that poor stock on that Snyder. So hopefully, hopefully this will work. Only one way to find out. As we like to say, if anything's going to happen, it's going to happen out there. Now, the cartridge on the left is the 585 ball. The cartridge on the right is the 575 ball. And you can see that hourglass shape I'm talking about here, how it actually flares out. Where this one, if it is, it's not much. But again, it always shot really well with this projectile. And the only way I could get this one to work was by upping the powder charge to a ridiculously uncomfortable amount. So, hopefully, with the base filled in with some grease and using cream of wheat instead of wads, hopefully we'll get some better results with the 575. Ah, pull from the bottom of the trigger. Right next to the other two o'clock, Jake. Boy, I thought I fixed that. Son of a bitch. Two o'clock again. You might have gone right through yep, one of them I've holes. Seen that son of a bitch hit it two o'clock, bro. All right. So here's 65 grains of 3F Swiss with the 575 ball with the cavity filled with grease. And so definitely hitting right, but my point of aim is here at 50 yards. All right. Okay, so these are 60 grains of 3F Swiss with a 585 ball and 2.2 cc's of filler. Okay, that was That was another one That was high This is another One o'clock, two o'clock shot Alright let me take a couple pictures of that. So this is the 60 grains with the 585 ball. And definitely seems to be hitting to the right. It's difficult to get a good pull on the thing with that trigger problem, which I'm really disappointed with because I thought I fixed it. You know, when I was working on it last night, I tried it 50 times. It worked every time. And as soon as we get out to the pasture, it starts to mess up again. But, you know, that's life. Okay, so this is 80 grains of 1F. Uh, with filler and a 575 ball again, so probably not gonna get anything special. I, special I would go for, fucked up with. I would go for decent. I'm not even looking for special at this point. Yeah, just something that'll perform. Man, that's infuriating. Yeah, <laughs> seems like it's getting worse. Hey, right next to it. Oh, see that hang? That was another uh, 
That one was closer to three o'clock, I think. Yeah, but he's keeping a group with him. He is keeping a group. Okay, well that definitely went better. My aim is here at six o'clock. We got one, two, three, four, five, six. High and right, and I probably pulled that one because again, it's it's tough to get that thing to shoot accurate with that goofy trigger problem it's having. And again, that was 80 grains of 1F Swiss with some filler and a 575 ball with grease in the cavity. Well, it sure was disappointing that the lock is having trouble again because when I tried it at home, I was filing on it. I tried it at home. I must have pulled the hammer back and tried it 50 times. It worked every time. I got three shots in out in the pasture and it started doing that again. So again, makes it a little hard to shoot accurately when you're having problems like that. But still, based on the group that I got with the 80 grains of 1F, the 575 ball with the grease filled cavity, it grouped the best with that. Now, regardless of it shooting high and to the right, which are all things that can be fixed, and we're going to do that along with fixing the lock for real this time. I think it does demonstrate that by filling up that cavity, it does force it to expand even more. Now, I thought about trying it without it just to show you what it would look like. Now, we're shooting at 50 yards there, but I guarantee with a 575 ball and nothing in there the way I was originally trying it, it would not have touched the paper out there. And if it did, it would have been a total fluke. It's, it's that bad. So the group that it made there with that size projectile is actually pretty damn good. It's still probably three inch at 50 yards, which is not exactly a, you know, precision shooting, but based on what those things do without any grease, again, it wouldn't even touch the paper. So still need some more development and definitely needs some more work, but I think it definitely does show that having something in there to force the walls of the projectile open to expand definitely works. So as usual, folks, if you thought this video didn't suck, do me a favor and hit the like button and consider subscribing. And if you did think it sucked, well, then go make your own damn video.